got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them. I run through the money. The pressure be calling. Slap on my blessings. I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression is all that I wanted. The phone and affection. I summon and dub it. Cause I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them. I run through the Welcome to another episode of the Problems on Problems podcast. I am your host, Mike Santi. And today, it is all good vibes and good news. As if it's not usually. I mean... I guess it's kind of misleading when you're, yeah, I guess it's misleading when your podcast is, when your podcast is titled Problems on Problems, Um, because you think that I'm just going to have a bunch of problems, and you know what? Sometimes I do, but other times, like the intro song says, I solve them, Um, and if you don't hear that, then just... Rewind, play that song again, get me more views. And yeah, you'll know. But some of these problems, most of my problems, most of everyone's problems, mm, just mine. Let's not get general. Most of my problems, self inflicted. But this week, yeah, sure, who knows? I'll tell you what, though, football's back. Football is back, and Mike. I mean, I could be happier, but for the purpose of this, Mike could not be happier. Um, it it was surreal, honestly, being able to just like sit down for points in time in the weekend and like watch sports. Like I know, like baseball's been on, and the NBA has their bubble and all that stuff, but it's, honestly, it's football for me. Football and soccer, um, football and football. Let's fight in the comments. Um, but yeah, no, football's back, week one of the NFL, uh, college football's back for, I guess, some parts where, you know, their conference is playing, their conference is not playing. Honestly, for the conference is not playing, I think some of them may have made that decision a little too soon, but I'm not, I'm not a medical expert, I'm also not a commissioner or an athletic director, so what does my opinion matter? None, really, because they're still going to do whatever they want to do, but you would think yeah, you would think that for the NCAA being the money-hungry, soul-sucking institution that it is, coming from a college, a former college athlete, I thought they were for sure going to play, but apparently not. So, college football, whatever. Um, There were some good games on, but, you know, it's been weird. I'll pay more attention to it later. I probably won't, but the NFL started off with a, a Thursday night game, as if I could remember who played, because all I cared about was the Panthers playing on Sunday. Oh my gosh. All I cared about was the Panthers playing on Sunday, because this is my first official season as a Panthers fan. Not like it matters. Not like there's such thing as there being an official like fandom season, but it was just, it was time. Um, little backstory on that I grew up on Long Island New York and if you say in Long Island I don't trust you but Long Island New York East Patchogue shout out to the 11772 um big ups the 631 Suffolk County golly we don't need that many shout outs it's it's a fine it's a nice little quiet town a lot of things are popping it's by the bay I might still have family that lives there but That is not the point of this. The point of this is to explain to you guys that growing up in New York, on Long Island, you're really going to be like one of two things. You're either going to be a Jets fan or a Giants fan, and a lot of it has to do with either the friends you hang out with earlier on um, when you're first starting to like learn about football, play football, all that stuff, or really your parents. And so for me, as I touch my face for the 17th time in this episode... For me, it was a it was a Giants thing. Dad was a Giants fan. Dad is a Giants fan. Um, he's still here, thank God. But yeah, so I just grew up as a Giants fan, and it was great. Like it was a good time. Um, high school was fun because we won a Super Bowl there against the Patriots. Um, college was fun when we won another Super Bowl against the Patriots. I mean, not me. I didn't do anything. I'm not even part of the team. They won the Gi- the New York Giants won those Super Bowls without Mike, but it was fun watching the playoff runs, being the road warriors, beating the Patriots. Oh my gosh. You know, what's 
the best one was the Super Bowl that the Giants won to ruin the Patriots' perfect season. Because I still remember it to this day. Patriots fans, I don't have any like ill will towards y'all. It's not like I really care about Patriots fans because my team didn't lose to them when it mattered. Um, but yeah, there was a, an amazing shirt that had 18 wins on the front and then on the back in a big Giants logo. It said one giant loss. And for any sports fan, honestly, like just the creativity in that, just appreciate that because it doesn't happen too often. But yeah, as the, as the years went on, Mike left New York, went down to school in North Carolina, went down to school, went to school, just a lot of places. That'll be a completely different episode and a completely different conversation, but finished out in North Carolina, then moved to Charlotte. Oh, so weird. You moved to the same city that the Panthers play in and proceeded to go to more Panthers football games than in person than I'd ever gone to any Giants games in my life. And it just slowly started becoming this thing where I'd pay more attention to the Panthers, what was going on with them, because it was it was in my backyard. Literally, there was a point in time where I lived, the Panthers practice field was behind the building that I lived in. Um, I mean, it's still there, so do some math and you can figure out where I used to live in Charlotte. But yeah, it was like right there. And now, as I continue to give you more information about where I live in Charlotte... Uh, it's only a couple blocks down the road. Don't point that way. It's only a couple of blocks down the road. Um, where like P- Bank of America Stadium is close. It's convenient. And, you know, due to some, due to some GM decisions, some GM changes, some staffing changes, some letting go of important players, things like that. I just found it too difficult for me to continue this toxic relationship with the New York Giants. And I don't fault them for that. I do fault them for that. I completely, I just faulted them 1000% for that. There's no hard feelings. It's not like they care that I'm not a fan anymore. They're not missing any of the money that I was going to spend on like merch and stuff like that. They're going to do just fine. But yeah, I just figured now is a good time. Um, the last, yeah, Last season for the Panthers, last season for the Giants, last couple seasons for the Giants. It it was just bad across the board, so it just made it a little bit easier. I didn't feel that guilt of like being a bandwagon fan or like having to justify anything like that. Not like you have to. You're an adult. Do your own thing. If people call you a bandwagon fan and you are, cool. If you don't feel like it, whatever. But yeah, I just figured it was one of those times where everything had lined up that I could just basically transition over smoothly. There he is, Mr. Vin Diesel himself, and the biker boys. But yeah, so it was just one of those things where transitioning over made it a lot. It just made it smoother to transition over to a, not a new team, but a team that I'd already been cheering for and rooting for and all that stuff. And I maybe was just trying to hold on to like some piece of New York sports when in reality, outside of the Giants doing their thing and the Rangers couple really close Stanley Cup runs. New York sports just haven't been doing it. Um, And that's okay. Like, you can't always be the best and things like that. But on the other side of that coin, as a New York sports fan, you know suffering. Like, you (laughs) you know rooting for bad teams. And I think being in, like, one of the bigger sports markets in the country, one of the biggest sports markets in the country, it just, it puts it a, like a magnifying glass on that whole thing and it blows it all up in the sense that there's, everyone's eyes are on you regardless of what you're doing. So with that, a shout out to the New York athletes that are never going to see this or hear this, but keep doing your thing guys, like keep doing bits, but for the your boy, for the your boy, the your boy, your boy, neither of those. I'm not anybody's boy <laughs> for me. It's just got to be a Carolina Panthers thing now, so I'm going to take my talents to Charlotte. Not as as cool. It's never as cool. But yeah, no, keep pounding, doing all that stuff. (laughs) But with that, I'll I'll leave 
I'll leave this one little piece where outside of the big headlines of obviously former Panthers quarterback Cam Newton going to the Patriots, doing work, I want to say he might have set the it's like a franchise record for like rushing touchdowns by a quarterback um, in a game, something like that. Maybe it's a little too specific. Um, and then former Patriots quarterback Tom Brady playing for the Bucks and reminding everybody that the Bucks are still the Bucks, like offensive powerhouse and everything. You can't use those offensive weapons if you don't have an O-line. And I'm not saying this as a sports expert, and there is no way, shape, or form that this is going to turn into a sports podcast. I'm just saying, give your quarterback some time. Easier said than done. I'm not standing up on a line in those trenches against those guys. But if it's your job, you know, do better. But don't do better. Actually, no, do better because that brings me to my next point where, as a Panthers fan, are you really rooting for a good season this year knowing that if you tank, not purposely tank, but if you tank, you get a shot at Trevor Lawrence. Like, hashtag tank for Trevor. That's really what we should be talking about right now. Like, sure, let's keep games close and everything, and let's try. And, I mean, please don't let don't let Christian McCaffrey um, get upset or anything like that. Keep paying the man long enough so that you can get a quarterback to be able to facilitate these things. Um, yes, you need a whole bunch of other pieces. The defense needs work and all that stuff. But please, for the love of God, tank for Trevor. And if you're a Panthers fan, just think, accept the temporary pain of losing now for the long-term possible reward of winning a lot later. But yeah, it's just one season. Plus, it's a it's a quarantine season. It's a pandemic season. Like no one's really even like no one you were no one's really in these stadiums like that. I mean, even in North Carolina, nobody was fans weren't in there. And so because we're in still phase point two point five. Phase two point five. I don't really know what that means again. I forget what the phase is. I need like a flow chart every time. All I know is that like gyms are open and stuff like that, which is great. As if I'm gonna go there. Um, but I am going to go there. Skinny might come in soon. Yeah, skinny might coming soon. But yeah, so with that, you still can't go to games and anything like that. So why? This is the perfect time. Not the perfect time for that. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, I guess football is the topic for this week's episode. It's just Mike being happy that football's back. But really, I guess the topic for this episode might be football, a little bit of, oh yeah, random bit of advice. Don't take yourself too seriously. Um, I'm not saying this happened this weekend because far be it from me to start making a podcast based off of my previous weekend. Theo Vaughn already has something like that called This Past Weekend, but there's just some things where I was like, hey... It's not that serious. Like, you don't have to get offended by everything, um, especially when you're just acting offended to put on this appearance to impress somebody else. Um, oof. Listen, if I was with you this weekend and you thought that had anything to do about you, let me just blanket statement. It has nothing to do with you, uh, especially if I was hanging out with you in, in a group, um, a very responsible socially distanced group. But yeah, if I was hanging out with you in a group, that's not the case. Um, also, if I was hanging out with you one-on-one, this has nothing to do with anybody that I was hanging out with this weekend. It was just a... <laughs> it was as I panic and now start backtracking. It was really just about like me seeing, witnessing certain situations where it's just sometimes you just got to loosen up, man. Like, I'm not the funniest guy ever. Well, that's about it. There's no, there's no, like, there's no, but I'm just not the funniest guy ever. Um, I just don't, I also just don't take myself that seriously. So I know when to turn it on and off and everything like that. Like Mike still has a day job. So it's not like I'm going to be goofing around saying outlandish things at work. And then I also try and be aware of my audience so that I'm not, well, not this audience. You guys, you guys had a choice to watch this. Um, people that I hang out with, well, they also had a choice to hang out with me, but they don't, there's no editing. They don't know that like the next thing that's going to come out of my mouth. So if I do say a ridiculous pickup line, 
they were not expecting that. But yeah, it's just one of those things. Like I happen to be the butt of my own jokes. Is it the butt? The butt of the joke? The bud of the joke. The butt of the joke. I think it's the butt of the joke. All the doubts just creep in when I'm in front of this camera. Like I feel as though I'd know these things, but as soon as like that light, that camera comes on, whatever, it's just a rough go at it. But I say all that to say, if you get any advice out of this episode this week, it should just be, hey, don't take yourself too seriously. It's not fun if you're taking yourself too seriously all the time. Like, And it leads to like all the secondhand awkwardness where it's like you're trying to make a joke out of an awkward situation, but it's only awkward because you were too serious. So, hey, loosen up a little bit. It's not that bad. It's not bad. I Yeah. It's a good time. It could be a good time if you weren't too serious. But yeah, so I'm going to take a break, do some things with the camera, and then when we come back, we will get to the tail end of this episode where we hit you with those. You know what we hit you with every Friday. <laughs> yeah. P.O.P. All the time. And we're back. So I don't know why I say and we're back because you guys don't. You got, there's no commercial here, um, unless, hey, YouTube, um, as I squirm around trying to get a comfortable spot in here. Um, oop, doop. Yeah, there we go. Um, YouTube, I don't know if you could strategically use your algorithmic powers to place the commercial right here. Or if you want to start sponsoring episodes, I'll make a commercial for you and put it right there in the break. But we are back. Um, tail end of the episode, like you guys are used to anyways, we'll hit you with some... I'm going to hit you with that Friday food debate. Roll the animation. It's probably already rolling. But yeah, so last week's Friday food debate is a hot dog a sandwich. And I don't know why I expected anything different from this because it's a difficult conversation, even more so difficult debate. But it came back exactly 50-50. And I waited Waited, waited. I basically waited until right before I filmed this episode to call it, where I was like, okay, it's not moving. And I will say that for for that debate, that debate's a little difficult in the sense that you're now presented with an option that is a protein. I'm not saying a meat because not all, <laughs> you already know, okay? You know what it is. Um, but a protein between between or fixated inside of some vehicle of bread. Very loose definition. Um, but I only say that because if you start thinking of, let's take this for example, let's take the side of a hot dog not being a sandwich. Most people will say the that it's inside of a bun, but the bun's connected. Counter argument to that. What are subs? What are hoagies? What are heroes for New York people? What are grinders for other people in like, I don't know, Jersey and Philly and stuff like that. But things like that were like th- those things are probably considered sandwiches. I would consider those a sandwich. Um, which then makes me start thinking like, mm, maybe, but then it doesn't give you it doesn't give you the warm, fuzzy feeling when you say a hot dog is a sandwich because you think, ugh, it should be its own thing. And you know what? Maybe it is its own thing, but for the sake of this argument, it ain't its own thing. Or maybe it is. That's the counter side. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. Not one of the things. Basically, I because it's 50-50, I'll weigh in. <laughs> That's so dumb. I weigh in every single time. Um, so we're just going to keep doing that. But yeah, because it's 50-50... I could see the difficulty of this uh, of this debate, and let the record show that I, hmm, when when brought the evidence supporting that a hot dog is a sandwich, I don't really see the contrary side of it, but I'm not the happiest about it. Like I, I personally, Mike Santi, eighteen, Mike Santi, eighteen, all social medias. I, yeah, I, I, 
I don't want to feel I'm, I'm not the happiest that a hot dog is a sandwich, but I feel like evidence wise, if it's going to go into those categories, then yeah, it's a sandwich. And if you grew up, if you grew up on the struggle, you could turn any slice of bread into a hot dog bun. I'm just letting you know, like you just got to get a little that corner, man, you already know. But yeah, like maybe for that alone, the nostalgia aspect of it, maybe a hot dog does have to be a sandwich. But who knows, that is way more time than we wanted to spend, we wanted to spend, than I wanted to spend on a Friday food debate. But also, but also it's just one of those things where like, don't take it too seriously. It's just food. But yeah, a hot dog might be a sandwich just based off of these definitions. But this week, this week, I feel like, you know, as as football is starting, as summer starts to wind down, even though we still got a couple more weeks left, I guess, officially before fall. It's just one of those, uh, it felt right. Yeah, it felt right to choose this one to kind of start wrapping up the summer-ish debates, even though I don't think any of these debates had anything to do with summer, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for a missed opportunity, but hey, we still got something. But corn, um, an American staple. Yeah, an American staple, that's good enough. Um, enjoyed by many families all over the summer. I found some troubling pictures. No, not like that. Anyway, let's get to the chase because this is getting weird, weird, weird. Uh, so I found somebody posed the idea to me that, that there are different ways to eat corn on the cob, which I never even thought that was a thing. Like, so transparency. Up until this question was posed, oh, good clap, Mike. Up until this question was posed, I legitimately thought there was only one way to eat corn on the cob. Um, I don't know what I hear, but anyways. And with that part, to me, I thought corn on the cob, you were just eating it horizontally. So for like, that's it. But apparently people eat that, people eat it vertically. And I'll put pictures on there so you like understand what I'm talking about. But like, do you eat down the row or around the cob and then make your way down the row. And for me, I was eating down the row like a freaking typewriter all day on corn on the cob. And apparently not everybody does that. Um, so this week, corn on the cob, how do you eat it? Do you eat it down the row or around the cob? Um, horizontally versus vertically, we'll see what happens in the definition part of it. But yeah, so think about it. Um, but with that, we transition over, and now we get ready for the end of the episode because there's only, what, two more sections of this? It is your, oh, hell no. I know that much. Hold on. <laughs> That's me trying to blow a fly off the camera so it doesn't get anywhere close to the lens. But this week's Friday follows. <laughs> oh, hell no. Now you coming back? You coming back for more? That has to get cut out. This week's Friday follows. Um, so business, organization-wise, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah, whatever you want to call that category where it's not an individual, a non-individual, there we go, a non-individual business, um, an entity, anything like that. This week, because it's football season, because I just did a whole dissertation on my transition over to this fandom, this week, it's none other than the Carolina Panthers. So y'all get to follow this week. I know this past week you didn't get the dub or anything like that. You know my feelings on that. But yes, Carolina Panthers get to follow this week. And with that, a, a future guest on this podcast. So I guess we're breaking news now on this one. The individual is hot right now, as you can tell by all of the fire department going. This individual, we're just going to use this. <laughs> Y'all are so close, I'm sorry. The individual is Game Day Goose, my friend, Edwin Guzman. Um, the <laughs> I will put a video up as soon as that goes away. But I'll put a video somewhere here now um, to explain the the character that is Game Day Goose. What the hell is that? Game 
Um, <laughs> but I can only tell you to every game day, this man will wake up his family and will not leave them alone until they answer the question, what day is it? And you better believe it's game day. Every Panthers game day, he does this. He's been doing it for years now. Um, he's actually out here like owning the rights to songs that he plays in his videos. Like he's that legit now. So yeah, shout out to him. And I guess this is the time where we're breaking news on it that he will be coming on to the Problems on Problems podcast soon. Um, definitely during football season. So you can get the story behind this whole this whole character, this whole like honestly, this whole creation that is a thing of its own now that happens and that is anticipated by a lot of people. And honestly, I hope that a lot more of you will start to anticipate it. So yeah, he gets a shout out today. Other than that, guys, uh, quick announcements. <laughs> if only they could be quick, Mike, like you can try making them quick, but I promise, promise, promise that the the questionable content problems on problems collab cribs video of questionable content studios and everything like that where i do all my business yeah no that sounds good where i do where i do most of the stuff filming things all that jazz that will come out soon i there are a couple pieces that i'm thinking about changing or something like that but don't worry we'll eventually get there you guys will see the crib y'all will see basically where everything gets filmed and why I'm just, tr I'm curious now at this point, like, I hope everyone's okay per usual, but I mean, if you're getting in an ambulance rush to a hospital, I hope you're, you get better. But yeah, so the, the Cribs episode will come out outside of that, the, oh, because I forgot to actually post the, uh, what's that thing called? Oh, the, the fill in the blank, like the question box and all that stuff. I'll do that this week for the divorce Q&A and everything like that. We'll delay it a little bit more. That way you guys have time to ask your questions. Whatever you want to ask about the the glow up, anything like that, feel free to leave it in there. DM me, comments, whatever. If you want an anonymous, you can DM me. I'm not going to like blow you up like that or blow up your spot, really. But yeah, so keep those questions coming. Don't forget to follow at Problems on Problems Podcast. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. Find me at Mike Santi on all social medias. And all social medias? Find me at Mike Santi at... Oh. <laughs> One more time. I got this. I swear, I swear, I swear. Find me at Mike Santi 18 on all social media platforms. And with that, guys, I hope you guys have a great weekend, great week, whatever this is for you when you're watching this episode. And I will see you guys next time. I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them I run through the money the press will be calling left on my blessings I feel like I'm falling the birdie is back tell me I'm garbage I'm going through something that's why I ain't calling phone in progression it's all that I wanted a phone in affection I summon and dub it